Welcome everyone to the next episode here at Macro Crypto. In this video, we're gonna be discussing tokenomics surrounding some of your favorite layer one protocols out there in the crypto space. Supply and demand. Will your investment dilute with time? Is there a mechanism in place in order for your investment to grow alongside the crypto space? Ultimately, do you have to be active with your investment in order to become profitable? We're gonna be discussing all of that within this video, mainly talking about the top L1s in the space. There's so many tokenomics, so many coins to cover. Obviously, we can't hit on everything within this video. If this video is well received, we will discuss the metaverse tokens, DeFi, L2s, and many more. But in this video specifically, we will be talking about layer ones at the top of the charts, beginning with who else? Bitcoin, the king of crypto, the Sultan of SWAT, the king of clash, the deflationary asset that cuts in half every four years. And then we're gonna discuss the heir to the throne, Ethereum, what it is today as a proof of work network alongside EIP-1559, but more importantly, what it might become post-merge as it merges into a proof of stake network. This is all gonna be followed up by the second sun, Cardano, the one waiting in the wings to swoop in and save the day when something starts to crash and burn on Ethereum. And ultimately, the ones looking on the outside is Polkadot, that third child. Usually, the third child is considered the smartest of the bunch. This, of course, is a wait and see approach. And then we're checking in on that broken stepchild. You guessed it, Solana. Solana is so broken, something's happening each and every day. And honestly, their proof of history tokenomics is a clusterfuck. It's all the same. We'll be diving into that within this video, checking in also on everyone's favorite meme token, Dogecoin. Now, it's basically the gift that just keeps on giving and a gift that literally gives every minute of every day for the rest of your life. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about the network, the layer one that's in the shadows. No one truly understands their tokenomics. When will XRP actually release into the wild? Ripple is the one that ultimately has this decision. We're gonna be discussing all this within this video, and this is one of many investment tips, but don't take everything I say as true investment advice. I'm just a dude on YouTube giving an opinion. None of it's financial advice. We're here for pure entertainment purposes only. So with all that being said though, let's go ahead, dive right into content, everybody. Tokenomics is a topic of understanding the supply and demand characteristics of cryptocurrency. Knowledge on tokenomics helps guidance with understanding the potential value of an asset in the future. In this video, we're gonna give a simplistic overview for some L1 protocols, beginning with none other than Bitcoin. The simplicity of Bitcoin's design is what makes it so beautiful. It's capped at 21 million BTC, and each block is currently every 10 minutes at a clip of 6.25 BTC. These rewards are headed to the miners securing the network. Now these rewards are cut in half every four years. At this moment in time, we are less than two years away from the next halvening, dropping that reward rate to 3.125 BTC. And every four years after that, until the last mined Bitcoin will happen in 2140. Current circulation supply is just north of 19 million. 90 over. 90%, I should say, has already been minted into existence. There is less than 10% of all Bitcoin left to be mined. Think about that for a moment. If we take a bigger picture and head over to CoinGecko, understand that this current circulating supply times Bitcoin price will give us a market cap just over 400 billion. Now the fully diluted valuation of Bitcoin is about 450 billion. What that takes is the max supply and takes it by what the current price of the asset is. The closer these two numbers are, the more valuable, in my opinion, the asset will be. There is so much Bitcoin already in the market and it's gonna be placed at a premium because it's gonna continue to be more scarce and scarce every four years for the rest of your life and for the rest of my life. Now, when we check over on the heir to the throne, the prince of crypto, Ethereum, 
it's slightly different. What it is today is a proof of network along with a proof of work network, along with the EIP 1559, which minor rewards are currently at two ETH per block. And it's a little bit more for what they call uncle blocks that have been, I can't remember every so often throughout the day as well, but primarily it's two ETH per block. Now the Genesis block to understand, there was 72 million ETH in the Genesis block which was given out to investors or the creators of Ethereum, such as Gavin Woods, Vitalik Buterin, Charles Hawkinson as well. Now, in current circulation, there is just north of 121 million ETH at this moment. ETH's total supply is infinite. It's gonna keep going up with time, but that's why they placed the mechanism EIP-1559. This is a burning mechanism amongst other things, but also ultimately helps control the inflation rate of Ethereum or the native token on Ethereum, Ether. Now, currently it's about 4.5% annual uh, issuance with time as um, Ethereum enters the market. But with EIP-1559, this net reduction currently is dropping that by 57.67%. Now, the more adoption to the Ethereum network, the higher that you can see this closer to potentially even 100% and even more, making Ethereum a deflationary token with time. Now, the reason why we talk about a deflationary token potentially using the EIP-1559 is alongside the merge itself. The Ethereum merge, which is the consensus layer, will merge with the execution layer. The execution layer is basically where you buy and sell within the market. You sell, you buy something, you exchange, use the smart contract, that's the execution layer. Now the consensus layer is where the staking mechanism is taking place and where the Ethereum protocol enters new issuance of Ethereum. Now this new annual Ethereum issuance can be anywhere between 0.17% to 1.71% of the entire ecosystem. The max annual issuance of all ETH within the protocol is just north 1.8 million ETH per year. Now the EIP-155 net reduction is gonna be de uh, to be determined. So the net issuance, basically how much per year, how much ETH is actually being issued when there's a burning mechanism taking place on all transactions across the space. If you do wanna be a solo staker, since Ethereum's gonna be moving from proof of work to proof of stake, to become a solo staker, you have to have 32 ETH. But if you don't have 32 ETH, don't worry, there's gonna be protocols such as Rocket Pool that allows you just to have 0.5 ETH or one ETH in order to place that ETH and gain rewards through a staker within that ecosystem. Now, as we move on and check on Cardano, the second sun, remember, it's waiting in the wings, hoping Ethereum crashes and burning just for a moment so it can take its rightful place as the heir to the throne. Cardano's monetary expansion comes from the reserves. Now, its max supply actually does have a cap of 45 billion ADA. Their current circulation is just roughly around 33 billion at this moment. Now, monetary expansion rate is just 0.3 per epoch. These epoch periods are every five days. So if you're staking Cardano, you're being rewarded an annual reward rate of five to 6% every five days. Annual inflation is roughly about 2%. Now, basically from these reserves, how much Cardano is in these reserves will slowly dissipate into the market and become less and less over time because it's taking 0.3% from the reserves. So as the reserves empty, that 0.3% becomes less and less ADA entering the market with time. And very similar to Bitcoin, this time horizon when that last epoch will take place is years down the line. We're talking beyond 2100. And so basically this is a slow dilution of Cardano entering the market with time as expansion happens for Cardano. Now, as we head over and check out Polkadot, the third born, Polkadot operates under a variation of proof of stake called nominated proof of stake. So its max supply is actually infinite. The reason why Polkadot does this in the first place is to create an environment to participate in the network. 
If you do not participate and you just buy Polkadot and you don't stake it, you don't use it as governance, you don't use it as a bonding mechanism, those three things as you see as a utility down there, your Polkadot will lose value with time because inflation rate is around 10%. This is give or take the amount of polka dot within circulation and a different type of algorithm that runs that, but understanding that the staking rewards can give upwards to 14%. That meaning you can get a profitable margin at about a 4% clip with a year to year ratio. Now circulating supply is just north of 1.1 billion dot. Mind you, this is an infinite amount of dot that can enter the market, but you have to use it through utility. Currently right now, the best is bonding. Bonding your, your dot for voting the next pair chain that can be part of the relay chain, part of the Polkadot ecosystem. And then when you do bond, you get issuances from that pair chain, such as Moonbeam that happened this past year in 2021 or you can use it for staking mechanisms, obviously getting that reward of around 14%, or you can go over to Kraken and only get 12%. But if you create your own mechanism or you use a staking pool, you can get around 14% at this moment. Now, checking on Solana, the broken step job. Solana utilize, utilizes proof of history, um, which is just, uh, it's beyond, a crapshoot right now at this moment, their max supply is infinite. Some would argue that their max supply was 500 million, entirely wrong. Uh, currently circulating supply is 342 million or just north of it. And the initial inflation rate is 8%. So they're gonna be entering more and more soul into the market. And this is gonna disinflation from that 8% by 15% annually until it reaches a long-term inflation rate and a fixed inflation rate somewhere probably after year 10, as you see in the visual in front of you, at 1.5%. And that will stay there for the length of Solana, unless the protocol obviously changes. Now the total supply is anyone that said that Sol would have 500 million was the cap. Obviously you can see this is pulled directly from their website. The total supply with time goes well beyond 500 million soul. Now, as we check further going into Doge, the court jester, the everyone's favorite meme, the most popular meme token on the market, which boasts a proof of work mechanism, which mind you actually, in order for them to be fully secure, they actually merged with a proof of work mechanism with Litecoin, I believe somewhere back in 2014, which ultimately gave them more of a hash rate in order to become more secure. Now their max supply is infinite. It's forever. It's just gonna continue printing more and more Dogecoin and there's no stopping it. Circulating supply is just right, roughly 132 billion. Each block time, one minute, yeah, one minute, and the amount of block production per minute is 10,000 Doge, 10,000 new Doge entering market every single minute of every single day, the gift that just keeps on giving. Now the annual insurance, uh, issuance, insurance, annual issuance of Doge will be roughly 5 billion coins per year, bringing it to a current inflation rate of 3.87%, a lot better than the US dollar. So thinking about 10,000 Doge entering the market every single min minute right now is a, is a better inflation rate than what the US dollar is, mind blowing. The chart that you see in front of you can really give you an aspect of with how much Doge that's gonna create by 2060, that's gonna be well below a 2% inflation rate for Doge because there's gonna be so much Doge out, Doge out there in the market. It's kind of interesting to see this meme joke token that was supposed to be a joke has really started to catch a little bit into this entire crypto sphere altogether. And then lastly, we do wanna talk about Ripple. In the shadows, the dark mysterious figure, no one understands how and when XRP enters or gets taken out of the market, only Ripple truly knows. So Ripple was actually pre-mined, the entire supply, and then slowly goes sells into the market. Max supply is 100 billion XRP. The circulating supply is about 48.3 billion that's currently circulating out in the market. 
the amount of in escrow, meaning the amount Ripple will be able to pull. Uh, I think it's like per day right now, like a hundred um, or one billion, something around there. Maybe every ten days. I can't remember if it's every day or every ten days, and then probably maybe either one of those. But one billion enters the market or is about to enter the market, goes from escrow. Ripple decides out of how much goes into the market and how much they put back in reserves. Typically, it's like 100 million gets put out there and 900 million get put back in reserves. So, and sometimes it's 800 million get put back in reserves and 200 million, there's no rhyme or reason. So what they're utilizing, basically the amount of in escrow currently is at 45.5 billion. That's the amount that's not in the market today. So if you're buying in the Ripple, understand that almost half of the amount of Ripple in existence is currently not even in the market. The ODL network uh, basically is what is making everything so valuable in the first place for Ripple is the use of XRP on that ODL network for banks. But banks don't even have to use our XRP on the ODL network in the first place. They're going to try to incentivize the banks to use that use the ODL network in order to use XRP for savings, but they don't have to. Ultimately, maybe making ODL very beneficial, but XRP losing value with time. So what you do want to understand that currently right now, the fully diluted market, uh, fully diluted XRP market is two times as more than the market cap of what is in the market currently today. Like we talked about with Bitcoin, with a hundred billion max supply, what it's currently at is 48 billion. If that fully diluted valuation at the price that uh, XRP is at today would be two times that of what the market cap is. Remember, you want that as close as you can, not a full 2X, not more than that away, meaning any of your investment into XRP can be diluted exponentially by Ripple entering the market or not. And they don't care about your investment. They're entering these markets or they're selling to these banks, the new diluted XRP at the end of the day. So these are some of the tokenomics around the space. We do want to mention that anything can change with time. That's why we showcased Ethereum in the first place is what it is now as a, as a proof of work network and using EIP-1559, which was introduced in the pro, pro, protocol as a burning mechanism for all fees at 70% per transaction. That was never a part of Ethereum five years ago, okay? Doesn't mean that any of these protocols can have a change within their protocols at some point in the future. But understanding where they are at now gives gives you a good idea what could happen in the future. Excuse me, by the way. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video to give you a good understanding of layer one protocols, the top layer ones out there in the game. If you did enjoy, give us a like, subscribe, and head over to that Twitter page. Give us a follow at Macro Crypto Club. The link will be in the description for everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, peace y'all.